back. Woo! I was speed running this like crazy, but I seriously need to get back to posting more. But anyway, I'm back with Velma's spiritual successor. But like the last video, I'm gonna talk about OG Scooby-Doo and HBO's Velma, because this trash pile of a show was the main reason I even brought this old idea out. It's funny how hate for the show has made artists try their hand at drawing Scooby-Doo, along with uniting the internet. Anyway, growing up, I didn't care too much for Velma. I mean, she wasn't as funny as Shaggy or had much going on other than figuring out who did it. I mean, she did have a few key core personality traits, but they weren't really anything noticeable and they only came out in like the weirdest situations. So her character was always left up in the air. Like over the years, she's had different personalities, likes and dislikes, and that's fine considering every version was a new iteration, though I feel Mystery Incorporated kind of influenced HBO's Velma because in that show, she was kind of mean and pushy with Shaggy and less friendly, I guess. Like, don't get me wrong, I liked her sass in relationship with Hot Dog Water, but watching her made me feel weird. But honestly, she was perfect compared to whatever Mindy Kaling was trying to do. Jesus Christ, what even was this character and character arc or lack of? Like, this wasn't Velma at all. This was 100% Mindy Kaling cosplaying as Velma. Like, when the idea was thrown around, I thought, okay, cool. A story specifically around one character from the mystery gang, that's fine. As long as the others are included, I couldn't have cared less. But with every new update, it just got worse and worse. But anyway, this version was just a self-insert with so much self-indulgence, it's insane. Like the entire main cast had a thing for Velma, aka Mindy, cause she's got this weird need for everyone to love her. Like I thought the Powerpuff reboot was bad cause Blossom's love interest was a self-insert of the guy who brought it back. And you guys know how I feel about self-inserts. They're fine to a degree if you know what you're doing and you don't overstep. But like ignoring the self-insert stuff for a moment, the character Velma is so selfish, rude, and narcissistic on a level I wasn't even aware of. And they wanted us to root for her. Like at the end of the show, she learned nothing or changed at all. So what was the point? Seriously, what was the reason? <laughs> The show, man, this show, the plot lines, the arc, all of it is just hot garbage. <laughs> Also, I didn't laugh once at Velma's jokes or comebacks. Like half of them were so outdated, I didn't actually get the references and the other half just felt like they were reading off Twitter threads. But you know what? Let's just move on to the designs because we're gonna be here all day if I just keep, I keep going. Anyway, again, just like Norville, the team didn't update Velma's design, which again, I don't get why they wouldn't. I mean, Velma's design was always weird to me growing up. Like it's iconic now and actually looks really cute IRL, but animated, just looks super uncomfortable for me personally. Like again, sorry to reference Mystery Incorporated, but they actually made the outfit work and make it cute. Though probably cause we can see her neck now and her sleeves are less puffy, but also along with her hair as it has more definition now instead of her head looking like one big circle. But HBO's Velma just looks like she's had a beanie on too long. Either way, the outfit is still the same other than the shoes, which again, I don't actually mind cause I have the same pair, <laughs> but I'm serious seriously surprised they didn't change the design. Like Velma hasn't had a different design other than the occasional outfit change. Like seriously, Shaggy has had an outfit change like four times. Fred and Daphne probably got the most yet Velma gets left out. Why? This has been going on for years. Like this isn't just like a, the HBO Velma situation. No, it's weird. It doesn't, I don't understand why they, why they haven't updated her the way they have everybody else. But again, sorry to reference the concept art, but yeah, it's a little out of the box in style for this character and a little top heavy, but it would have been the first new design Velma has ever gotten and they passed it up. Like, that's such a waste, man. I seriously hate I can't think of anything nice to say about Mindy's Velma. Like, some of the characters I was weirdly okay with, but this Velma, I cannot stand. Design-wise, though, again, similar to the OG, which, again, this show was supposed to be different. I have a feeling that Mindy and Warner didn't care that this was Scooby-Doo related. They just wanted to profit off the nostalgia by also adding new elements. But anyway, let's move on. I just, I can't anymore. We're go we gotta get into something good. So let's meet Velma's spiritual successor, 
Ethan Hoffman! Surprise! It's a boy! <laughs> Sorry the ones who thought it would be a girl, but good guesses all around. Anyway, Ethan is Hazel's best friend. Don't worry, there is no romantic interest at all. This isn't every animated show ever. Like, not to be shady, but I'm getting really, really tired of a male character and a female character being best friends, only for them to end up together at the end. Like, enough! That doesn't always happen! But yeah, uh, they've been best friends forever. Ethan does come from a lot of money, but his parents divorced when he was young, hence why Ethan and Hazel live in the same building. And though Ethan comes from money, he doesn't like people knowing that or acts like he does. Uh, he truly believes in hard work and finding your own way in life. So he was able to get into the same college as Hazel without the help of his parents. His major is fashion. He wants to create a fashion brand that's accessible to any class of people and still have that high quality, along with a recycle program to help combat the fast fashion industry. Our guy is very eco-friendly. Ethan is pretty smart, but not Velma level. He's pretty well read on fashion history and historical places. He's the type to watch documentaries for fun, not for school. Uh, he has a love for romance novels, something he picked up from his sister, though unlike Hazel, he's not as friendly as she is. <laughs> he is a theater kid through and through, so the sass is insane. He's kind of based around number one, Robin Buckley, and a tiny bit of Dan from Dan Versus. So he's a complicated guy, and also the shortest of the group. Uh, Ethan is probably my more ambitious character, both design and personality-wise. I really want Ethan to be a real character, even with his more over-the-top life and dreams, since he is a bit more standard and offish, he hasn't fully made friends with the others in the group, mostly because they're both extremely attractive, but also because he has a hard time making friends overall. Uh, what else? Oh, he's absolutely terrified of bugs and anything horror related, which makes Movie Nights at Hazel's the absolute worst. <laughs> As she always wants to watch slasher fix. So yeah, he's the one in the group like, haha, nope, not going in the spooky castle. No way, no how. Only to be told that the architecture is really pretty and then cave and go inside anyway. <laughs> like it's so easy to kind of convince Ethan to do things if you dangle something he really likes in front of him. Him. So like fashion, architecture, books. Also, he's not very shy, though he is a very quiet person on occasion. But you know, he's he he's not afraid to speak his mind and let everybody in the room know how he's feeling. <laughs> but anyway, uh, let's get on to the design. Okay, for Ethan's design, I decided to stick with the 70s theme, because why not? And hints to the OG, obviously, and because that is his fashion taste. So his hair is a more flat, shaggy styled mullet. And and is a copper hair color. So he's not necessarily a redhead, but more a brunette with a red tint. Anyway, uh, just a heads up, everyone has black eyebrows as I'm kind of lazy when it comes to actually coloring them the correct color of their hair. So yeah, <laughs> uh, the glasses are just for show. They're thick rim glasses with the classic orange tint made popular by Aviator, which I just recently found out. So super cool fact about that. Though I wouldn't be me if I didn't point out that technically his his glasses are not accurate as the more 70s aesthetic would have been way bigger than what he actually has. But Ethan's the type to pick what he likes versus what's correct. And aren't we all, you know, in some weird way? <laughs> uh, I also gave him a gap tooth, no real reason other than I love them on characters and I'm still on my hunter high. <laughs> so for his overall style, I based it around 70s nerd chic, kind of like Cher's outfit from Clueless. I really hope I said her name right. I haven't watched the movie in like years. But you know, something that gives off a casual vibe due to what he's actually wearing, but feels like it costs a lot because of the colors and the overall like aesthetic. <laughs> you know, something like a New York fashion student would wear. So I put him in a diamond plaid polo shirt tucked into dark blue high-waisted bell-bottom jeans. And originally I was gonna do black dress shoes with a gold heel heel, but after looking at it for a while, I realized, one, it didn't fit, and two, I just didn't like it. <laughs> uh, lastly, his signature coat, a custom-made trench coat he made himself with bright orange lines and a cream underside. He does have jewelry on, but I got lazy and didn't add the gems or rings, as you can see. <laughs> uh, as you can see, he is still color-coded to Velma, though with more newer colors of cream and yellow and warm browns. Again, everyone is going to be color-coded. So even though they do not match their spiritual successor in personality and likes and dislikes, 
the colors will let you know who they are taking over. But anyway, uh, I'm still trying to figure out Ethan as he's probably the one I think about the most in terms of story and character development since he's such a fun character to play with. And I think if this was ever a show, he'd have a pretty funny following. Like I can see a lot of memes being made and the occasional like silly TikTok animatic, but whatever. Anyway, let me know what you all think of Ethan and his role in the group because I do read a lot of you guys' comments. And some of y'all have like the best ideas I would never have even thought about. Like in my last video for Hazel, uh, Dizzy Lizzie came up with the best idea about Shaggy telling Hazel the story about how he fell for an alien and later on notices her great grandmother looks an awful lot like what Shaggy described Crystal to look like, which makes her think she's part alien and deepening her beliefs in the paranormal, which is just the best idea like some of you guys, I don't give enough credit for because you guys are so smart when it comes to stuff like that. Because like, I did want to bring Crystal back in some way. I mean, I really love the maybe parts of Scooby-Doo where they couldn't explain certain things, leaving the audience to believe that some monsters are real or aliens. And I want to add that element of some monsters being real as well in, in, this, in this new generation. Because I mean, that's the fun of it, right? The guessing. Uh, also, again, take a guess at what you think Daphne's spiritual successor looks like or acts like. Uh, I, I enjoy seeing what you guys think of the original characters and how they bleed into the next generation. Some of you are really spot on and it's kind of scary. Like a few of you managed to nail this Velma almost down to a T and I was like, I can't say anything or else they're going to know that that's the correct one. <laughs> Also, I will be changing the bye to the new one after six weeks as that's the recommended time to wait for people to watch the finale. And if you have it in that time, shame on you for getting behind. <laughs> Just kidding. But seriously, go watch it. You're missing out on all the best stuff or well, the best stuff they could include since it was canceled prematurely. <sighs> Anyway, next video will be my interpretation of lust. Yeah, I know, weird turn, but YouTube is low-key being mean to me about doing my own thing. Though I'm gonna blame it on the fact that I keep taking weird breaks every so often. <laughs> but you know, people really seem to love the has-been focused stuff, so think of this as me setting a trap for new people to check out Daphne and Fred afterwards. But also, cause I already finished the script and edited the video, so that is mainly the bigger reason why. <laughs> So I am, I am super ahead of everything right now. <laughs> but anyway, remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. It really helps out the channel and me. Uh, I hope you all have a super fantastic day and I'll see you guys in the next one.